Okay. Three, two, one. Woo! Welcome back to Still We Persist, episode 11. My name is Sienna Kasky. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm the AYA Women of Color Initiative Leadership Liaison. And hello, everyone. My name is Tamara. I am the AYA Women of Color Graduate Assistant, and I use she and her pronouns. Today, we will start this episode off like we always do with the land acknowledgement. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that has led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will, some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life, and some have lived on this land for more generations than can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth. What we now call Corvallis, Oregon, is located within the traditional homelands of the Mary's River or Ampanefu Band of the Kalapuya. Today, living descendants of these people are part of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Community of Oregon and the Confederated Tribes of Siletz Indians. We pay respect to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that is, brings us here today. So for today's episode, we have an amazing person here with us, and I'm so excited to interview them. But if you want to mm-hmm. introduce yourself. Yeah. Hey, y'all. My name is Taylor Inoho. That is my stage name. I use all pronouns, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, Taylor is a queen. Mm-hmm. And so our first question is gonna be, like, how did you get involved with your how, starting your house? Like, how did this mm-hmm. journey start for you? Yeah, so I think it's kind of like a, I guess not the typical story. I was just like, why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't have any real motivation to do it. Yeah. I've been going to the um, OSU drag show in the fall and in the spring, like my first um, two years I was here. And I was like, that, that's amazing. I want to do that at one point, but I never had the courage to do so because mm. coming from like my background is kind of choppy. Mm. <laughs> so I was never like okay with my queerness until I got to OSU. And this was really a place where I was able to, I guess, grow and like, hey, I can do this. And apparently I'm talented at it. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> look at your face. <laughs> yeah, I you were beat. You look good. <laughs> I'm like, I think I'm good at this. <laughs> like, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. <laughs> So how has it been like being a mother and a queen in Corvallis? Mm-hmm. I think, I think I never intended to start my house. I think it was more so of like, I want to make, I guess, give myself a platform because mm-hmm. I think for a lot of marginalized people, it's like you have to start from the ground up. Like there's no really basis for you to build upon. There mm-hmm. are drag houses in Corvallis, but I never, not that I didn't feel like they were meant for me. I just felt like I want to do something that resonates more with me. <clears throat> It kind of ties into my own cultural values as well as reaching out to other indigenous people who may want to ex- explore, I guess, parts of themselves they haven't been able to. Mm-hmm. And I think that mothering part really, it wasn't, I didn't, knew I didn't, I don't think I wanted to be a mother per se, but I think it was just like natural to me. Mm-hmm. I think because I like to care for people, I want to make sure people are okay. Just recently, this past, um, I think, fall drag show, um, me and my drag daughter perform- performed in the same show, not together, but. It was like, I think that's what I'm meant to do. Mm. <laughs> Just like you care for another person and make sure they're on the right path because I know there's definitely points during that time where I was like, I'm not sure if I can do this. Like, you are an Inaho, you can do this. <laughs> yeah, you are an Inaho. <laughs> also, it's, we're, hour, we're an hour out, you can't back out now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is, I think that's really amazing and I'm really happy that you've been able to find your space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe people that don't know drag lingo, like what are some, how do you define drag for you? Um, I think, dang, that's hard. Cause I think from probably a couple years back, I think drag was seen as like a act of performance or gen, gender performance exclusively for cisgender men. Mm. And I think that's kind of like the dominant narrative that's been like pushed upon, I guess, major, um, I guess, spaces in drag. But how I see drag is just, performance of gender, that's it. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't matter what your gender is or how you identify, it's just it's just you. It's mm-hmm. a hyper extension, almost exaggerated form of gender. Mm-hmm. Because I know in my full, I guess, makeup, beat, body, it's like, that's not a woman. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's almost like a hyper, ex- or 
hyper feminine, unrealistic standard that's pushed mm. upon people. So it's kind of funny, like, why would you think that's a woman? Or mm. like, what, why would you associate with femininity? Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a joke in itself. Yeah. Like, mm. <laughs> How do you embed both indigeneity and like drag culture and mix it together to like create your house and to create a space for indigenous people to kind of mm -hmm. explore this? Yeah, so uh, it's, I think starting out with my name, cause I, when I first started, I was like, what, what's gonna be my name? I need something that's gonna be catchy. I'm not sure if I wanna be funny. I don't wanna, I'm not sure if I wanna be a dancer cause realistically I can't dance that well. <laughs> Because I was like, that's off the table. <laughs> but just trying to figure out like, what's going to be the thing that's going to kind of put me out. And I first mm -hmm. started, it was Taylor Not At You, which is going to play off my last name. But I was like, hmm, it doesn't really fit. And I thought about where I worked, the NAL, neighboring lawn with Ina House. I was like, Ina House, Ina Ho. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like another play on words that integrates like where my creation was here on Kalapuya land. Mm. And rec um, rec recognizing like, this isn't necessarily like my homelands, but I want to still have that in my name because mm -hmm. my creation is here, my second base is here. Mm -hmm. And I think um, as I started exploring more into like my drag, I started pulling things from my own culture, being from the Southwest Pueblo culture, mm -hmm. and seeing how people um, from my community who identify as two spirit or Shahmanna, um, and how they were perceived by like anthropologists to be in drag because mm -hmm. it was like performance. But it's like, it was just who they are, who they were. So in my eyes, it's kind of like my current, I guess, drag aesthetic is almost just like a contemporary version of that. So mm. it's really, there's no real disconnect. It's just kind of like, um, I guess me just performing. Mm. <laughs> and I think, um, I think when I, I think it was when I, probably pretty early in my drag year, I did a photo shoot um, with some of my friends about Miss Neymar, Indigenous women and girls. Mm. And I think that was when I was like, this is something that hasn't really been touched on, especially within like drag culture. Mm -hmm. And I think not only is it like drag, you don't think it's being serious, but I think that element of um, kind of brings people in and kind of reads more in, read more into it. Cause I think there's kind of that disconnect where certain issues just don't work. But I think that's kind of just like a mindset of like, you don't want to deep, dig deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I do too. <laughs> that was like such a deep, like you really took me on a journey there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I think you touched on this aspect of everybody I, or like dominant society sees drag as like this fun, like, oh, we're just like hanging out, dancing, whatever. We're going to go get drunk at a club and watch. And mm -hmm. But you're bringing like another level of depth to it that I think is really important and merging both indigeneity and talking about missing and murdered indigenous women mm -hmm. and just bringing that into space. Um, taking up space, I think even touching on topics of like two spirit folks and making sure that that's being incorporated. And mm -hmm. I love how you talked about like amping up and like playing up on gender as mm -hmm. you're doing drag. Um, and I'm even still like reflecting and trying to think through your comment around like you're like hyper femme and like that's not what a woman is. I'm like, damn, like you're hella right. Like I'm not, <laughs> like, I identify as a woman and I'm not. Yeah. Like bobbed out and like your eyebrows a beat not face. Here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, whoa, what? Okay, like, yeah, that's very true. And so what does that mean as like I am someone who watches drag mm -hmm. um and like tries to like uplift the community who like performs and how am I like sharing space with you all mm -hmm. um and also like supporting folks and not necessarily like taking up space that isn't mine. Yeah a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also really liked how you touched on like your second bases, like including the mm. Kalapuya land and I just I think that like you have been a force on this campus too. Oh, and so you. it's <laughs> it's really neat to see like different people that are change makers and doing it through different avenues. Because mm -hmm. so I even think like on your Instagram account and Twitter, like I've learned so much from you mm -hmm. and have really been more engaged with like the drag community now because of you mm -hmm. and so i think that like you're very needed in, <laughs> in this world because like, we don't see many two-spirit folks mm -hmm. like in the media yeah and so mm -hmm. i think that you're doing a fantastic job oh thank you i appreciate that <laughs> and I, i'm really happy that you're in this community mm -hmm. that we can have these types of conversations and watch everyone perform and i think it's beautiful mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like, what's something that's really empowering about being a queen? 
Uh, I think there's a lot of aspects. I think when I first started, I think there's a lot of like, I don't look like myself. Because mm-hmm. I think there's still kind of that journey of like self acceptance and like how I present as a queer, non binary, two spirit, fat person. Mm-hmm. And the heck, kind of how changing my face shape was like, oh, this is cool. Like, I don't look like myself. I can be anybody who I want mm-hmm. with makeup. And I think that was like a really driving force of like, I can cut my cheeks as deep as I want, like mm-hmm. make my um, eyes as huge as I want. And I think that was like a really fun aspect. But now I think it's more so of like, what I can do to bring attention to topics that are really important to me mm-hmm. and also making myself known in a community that's kind of overshadowed and also kind of pushed out in certain aspects. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that was kind of a major force for me to be like, no, I want to keep doing drag, <clears throat> not only just for myself, but like, of course, the aspect of like, oh, I look pretty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I look pretty. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and so that's something to claim because I think for a long time, I was like, oh, I don't want to look at myself. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just kind of growing that, um, I guess, foundation of like, you can appreciate how you look. It's just another extension of you. Mm. Because I think that was another part of like, oh, that's Taylor and this is my other half. Mm. I was like, no, we're the same person. (laughs) Mm. I love that. I feel like every time you say something, I'm always like, yeah. Like, sitting like, Whoa, yep. like, wait, give me like 20 minutes to process yeah. that so I can like, figure out where I'm at in life. That is beautiful. So I guess one of the questions that I have, and this is like rogue, but mm-hmm. what is one of your favorite performances that mm-hmm. you've done? I haven't performed a lot. I feel like I'm more so a look queen. Mm. <laughs> or a favorite look. Yeah. yeah. Um, I th- well, I think my favorite performance has been when I performed Juice by Lizzo. Mm. I, think so that, I think that was one of my favorite mm-hmm. ones. Um, Cause I think, I just love Lizzo. Lizzo's one of like my main top artists. I was like, I actually performed a couple of her songs. So I might, I just might keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think that one was really fun. I think that was when I actually felt I had like my stuff together. Like mm. I had my outfit together. I had my hair, I used to my own hair. I was really proud of. Um, my makeup was good. And then it was just like a whole like, 180 compared to like my first time performing because mm. I injured myself the first time I performed. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did the splits and I pulled a hamstring. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, so that was the first one. It was a little bit rough. I was like, it, I can redeem myself. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and the exact same part, I did the splits. Like, I didn't break myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's even funnier because, like, oh, like they're a bigger queen, like they can't mm. do as much. But then at the very point of like, oh, I'm gonna surprise y'all, and boom. <laughs> That's right. That is right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And it's just like really fun to see how people like interact with me because I think some folks know me in drag and they also know me out of drag. So I think it's really fun to see them like interact with like I guess both sides of me. Mm-hmm. And I think even more people who don't know me on a um, singular level, I think it's like they have this image. But when they talk to me, like, oh yeah, I'm like really sweet. I'm not like a standoff kind of person I'm like mm-hmm. I'm just like I don't know I can't mm-hmm. explain it <laughs> awesome. um so we really want to know any makeup tips that you have oh yeah I mean like your eyeshadow is popping right now <laughs> mm-hmm. and I you can't do anything with my makeup so. <laughs> I don't even have any on right now so like, <laughs> clearly I need help <laughs> yeah so um I guess we can go in like order of like how I do my makeup. Mm-hmm. I can start with eyes first. Okay. Um, I think just find, I don't really find an eye primer because I think that's mm-hmm. kind of a scam. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. I like, I think um, either a concealer base or mm-hmm. an eyeshadow base. Like I know there's expensive ones like Mac Paint Pop. I don't use that. I used Elf, mm-hmm. <laughs> the Elf um, putty eye primer. That's really nice. I, I have that right now. Um, ooh, they're, um, what's it called? Poreless Putty can. Poreless Putty mm. Primer, that one's really nice. Okay. Even if you don't wear a foundation, it's like just really good to smooth out your skin. Mm. Um, that's also nice. And I don't use liquid foundation. I just use powder. Mm-hmm. So just because my skin type is oily, so I don't want to make sure I want to make sure I'm like shine free throughout the day. Mm. Um, I think again with eyeshadow, I think for me, what I found difficult was my high my eyes are kind of hooded, mm. and. I was so used to seeing like people on Instagram and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, like doing beautiful cut creases and all that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I can't do it without my eye. I don't have the lit space for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like faking it where it's like I cut above like where my actual crease is mm-hmm. and um, making sure like my colors go a little bit higher mm-hmm. just to make sure it's still visible if like I look up or if like I have glasses on because I do wear glasses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, just trying to make it more visible um, and also not setting your base because I think a lot of times when once you put your concealer on, you won't. It's kind of like a you put powder on top to make it 
not move. Mm -hmm. But I think that kind of prevents the eyeshadow from sticking. If you want to go for a more pigmented look, mm -hmm. if you want like a like a, just a soft like one color eyeshadow look, it's good to set it. But if not, if you want something like this, <laughs> I say don't set your base. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about uh, highlight? Highlight. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I think. I see you're popping. I know. <laughs> I was like, you're shining right now, and you're just not going to talk about that. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, yeah. So um, there's a lot of good highlighter formers out there. I think there's some that are really expensive that I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> I think the most expensive highlighter I've gotten is like fifteen dollars, but even then, that's mm. not too bad. Mm -hmm. And they're usually from independently owned brands, like indie brands. I mm -hmm. think they have like some of the best items you can get. Mm. Like for I think. Um, Foundation, drugstore, but for like eyeshadows, highlighters, uh, lip products, I think indie brands are the way to go. Oh, and you. this one is actually from my favorite brand, Give Me Glow. Mm. <laughs> um, so what I like to do is I like to spray my face with like any kind of um, setting spray or like Mario Dabesco, anything we have pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then I wait for it to kind of dry down a little bit and I just dip my brush in, um, a highlighter brush, use like this round tip. Mm -hmm. I like place it and just kind of focus on certain areas like the high points like I have a round face so when I smile it like comes a little bit on my temple all the way down to my cheek mm -hmm. and when I, I kind of shift my head and see the light that's where I place it and it looks really intense for a little bit and then I just buff it out. Mm. Cool. Okay. And your eyebrows look good too. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a journey. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like, journey. I feel like oh, when yeah. I was younger, I was like, what were my eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> it's like they were so sparse. Like my mm -hmm. um, dad's eyebrows are pretty much the same way. Mm -hmm. We always joke with him, like, like when you were being made, like glue stick. <laughs> <eyebrow hair. laughs> so I was like, that's your eyebrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was a little bit more lucky to have them denser. So like, I think mm -hmm. I just, it was just a process of like, um, finding the right shape. Mm. Cause I think when I first started, mine were like kind of skinnier than what they are now. And looking back, I was like, that was not a look. Trial and error. Yeah. Yeah. Trial so, and, error. Mm -hmm. and I think, um, I think just finding what works best for you. I know there's powder, pencil, pomade. Mm -hmm. I like to either go with pencil or powder because it's a little bit more softer. Mm -hmm. And I think I have enough hair to kind of play it off as like I have bushy brows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think something that it's really, important about makeup is you don't have to spend a lot to make it look good. Mm. I think that's like a really main thing you see on like beauty bloggers or like mm. even YouTube where it's like you could buy or buy really expensive products to make yourself look good. Mm -hmm. But like I know going back to highlighters, I think some of my favorite formulas are from ColourPop. Mm. Like we're I really cheap. Color. The Super Shock um, cheeks, those are really nice. Mm. And they have that really bouncy texture. You need to use your finger, which is probably the best way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Beautiful. I guess, like, anything else to share with us that you want to tell the AYA community? Um, thank you for having me. I'm really excited <laughs> <laughs> for whatever comes for the uh, cover comes um, in the future for me. Um, awesome. Yeah. Anything yeah. else to add tomorrow? I'm just so thankful to share space with you mm -hmm. and pick up on your makeup tips and literally everything <laughs> that you shared. Um, I think is so important. And honestly, you're leaving with me. You're leaving me with so much to reflect mm -hmm. on. Um, and again, the platform that you have on this campus and the stances that you're taking and how you're bringing people in and making people think, I think it's amazing. And so I feel really lucky to be able to know you and to be <laughs> able to know that I am on a campus and am living life with you in it because I, Am I gonna cry? Why am I so emotional? Um, <laughs> it's the coffee. I was like, yeah, it's the coffee. <laughs> but I really think that you were just doing so much and I felt really lucky, like really, really, really lucky to be yeah. on this campus with you here um, because I think people need you more than yeah. you think they do. Um, and so thank you for being yeah, here. That's so sweet, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I second everything Tamara just said. Like it, it's, we've been looking forward to this episode for so long. <laughs> like, we even, I remember last time we were like, we should <laughs> like, we're, like, we're gonna invite Taylor, and so I'm really thankful that you're here. And yeah, thank space. you for having me. I think conversations like this don't happen too often. Mm -hmm. I think like we theorize like, oh, we should do this, but it never comes like fruition. So I think mm -hmm. having this space, just making it known yeah. and like sharing our different perspectives, is really powerful. Oh, well, awesome. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in. Um, it, we'll put your Instagram handle mm -hmm. in the box below, so you can connect with Taylor if you want. Mm -hmm. Thank awesome. you. Bye. I don't know what to do. I always do the peace sign. Bye.